First of all, I hope all of you are very excited to be here today because I'm very excited because we as a nation, we as a world, we are in a new era. Actually, history has been rewritten in India and each one of us are part of the history makers. Like I said, thank you for having me here. I'm privileged to be here and it's my pleasure. Just more than a year ago, or just actually less than a year ago, we were deliberating very aggressively and sometimes pretty hard. Do we need 4G? Do we need Wall T? Are we satisfied with 2G and 3G? Now the good thing is everyone has embraced 4G and everyone is embracing Wall T. And even better, we have become a multi-exabyte country if you will. And Ericsson in his report last week said, we will have 14, 15 billion exabytes of data per month. And by the way, I believe it's just a scratching of the surface. If you, if you think about it, 150 MB per user was our consumption. Mr. Ericsson talks about 18 GB of construction, um, consumption per month being projected. That is the new world we are in. We have a lot of data. And now the question is, how do we leverage that data for our nations and our own individual citizens' benefit? 5G is just the beginning, if you will. And it is so exciting to be here, like I said, because among us, we have a simple and yet prudent and a brilliant statesman, sir. We are grateful to you having been with us as our Honorable Minister Sri Manoj Sinhaji with his unconditional encouragement, support, and leadership. Can we give him an applause for being the 5G King of India? And the good thing about him is also he doesn't look at it as himself. He's actually put around him a set of competent people. And I don't believe uh, Ms. Aruna Sundararajam is here today, but her and uh, Mr. Ara Sharma and team, in fact, if uh, uh, I don't know whether Rajan Matthews is here, if he's here, I think it's high time COAI bestowed the lady of the telecom to Ms. Aruna Sundararajan very quick, and I hope we do give her and Mr. Ara Sharma also a thank you for, and an applause, if you will, for being the anchor for our telecom industry, for having where we have reached. Thank you, folks. And when we think about it, we have just started our journey. And this is not just about leadership in India. I believe it is the genius leadership in the everything connected global ecosystem, if you will. And that's our opportunity. And we cannot be complacent, if you will, even for a minute. And the demo, cry, the demo Ben CEO said, my competition is not in traditional car companies, if you will. If you think about it, Uber is the largest car company in the world, doesn't own a single car. Airbnb is the largest hospitality industry in the world, doesn't own a single, single hotel chain. Facebook, the largest retailer, does not own a single retail shop. How do you become successful in this new world? Now, the, the statement of that car CEO is, it is not just about the box outside. It's about what's inside. It is the software. It is not about the, the car from different shapes and sizes. It's about the software and the computer that runs on wheels. So it is about the Googles, the, Telsa, the Teslas, the Amazons, the Apples of the world. So hence, even in 5G, I think the opportunity is desegregating the commodity hardware from the software. And the opportunity for us as a nation to own in the everything connected world and create digital giants of intelligence, if you will. And that is my story for you today as we run through this very quickly. If you look at the current digital ecosystem, I've kind of categorized the current digital ecosystem in India 
as digital platforms, which is the messaging, the, the commerce, the payment, the browsers of the world. If you look at it, the United States and China own pretty much a good set of these applications and services. That means they own a good set of data, which is a very important from correlation and mining of that data, as well as it has had a huge economic and social development in those nations. And I think the opportunity is not lost. What, the question is, what are we going to do for tomorrow? This is the current situation. And for tomorrow, when you look at the evolution, this is the age of the connected intelligence. And if you look at it, it's a combination of the cloud. We need to have a cloud infrastructure in India. We need to have an Alibaba of India. We need to have an Azure of India. We need to have an Amazon of India. And we need to have an artificial intelligence machine learning platform of India. We need to have the blockchain of India. Like way, Bitcoin is the largest bank today. I mean, if you think about it, this morning it reached up to $16,000. By the way, at peak and it came down to 12,000, they don't own a single dollar or a rupee in their bank. Now, that doesn't mean I say the blockchain methodology in its current form is right, but it's a great technology for us to adopt and leverage. Now, what does this all bring? It brings a transformative ecosystem for us because it's not just about connection, it's about everything is interconnected. The bigger question we ask is, are we as a nation prepared for everything connected in this smart digital world? If not, how do we ensure that we are indeed prepared? That, to me, is the India Stack 3.0. What we did very successfully in the India Stack 1.0, if you look at it, whether it's the Aadhaar, whether it's the GST, whether it is a digital locker, whether it is the UPI slash Beam, et cetera, right? And what we can and need to create in the India Strat 3.0 and own the powers of intelligence, the platforms of intelligence, if you will. And that is why we do not need to create and replicate some of the things that has been done already by some of the bigger players in the world. The opportunity is in owning the tomorrow. And let's not worry about what has happened in the past. And to do that, I absolutely believe that we need to create the India's grid ecosystem. What does that mean, the grid ecosystem? If I think about it, it's not just about the most important ecosystem outside of the national defense ecosystem is the energy ecosystem. In addition to the energy ecosystem, I think we need an emergency response and disaster management ecosystem. We need a financial and tax ecosystem. I have written those guys on the left, right side. That is because each one of those four blocks absolutely requires an additional level of security. And we as a nation have the biggest opportunity on this planet today with the skill sets we have. The need to create the IPRs for owning every single grid platforms to create the grid ecosystem of India through public, private, and other partnerships. Now, India clearly is in rapid transition. We went through a voice era. We went through a sporadic 2G, 3G data era. Then we had the geo-driven affordable era. Now we can have the India-driven, everything-connected era for the global world in this everything-connected ecosystem. Our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi ji, right? He has very clearly said, I am not here, and I repeat, and I've said this before, to do any incremental change. I am not here for a simple change. I am here for a new India. And that is the opportunity that we have in the fourth industrial revolution. And that is not just for creating for India. It is for creating for the world. Now, 5G in the everything connected ecosystem, I do not look at 5G as a technology of radio. I look at 5G as a set of capabilities. And when you look at that set of capabilities, 5G, it transcends economic sectors. If you look at the bigger companies, be it an Alibaba, be it a Baidu, be it a Tencent, 
be it the Google, be it the Facebook, they are across domains and across sectors. In the 5G technologies pillars, I absolutely believe it is not just about the radio. It is about the cloud. It is about the smart devices. It is about the sensors. It is about making sure that we have the required fiber in India as well. When you look about our 4G to 5G, it is also important to make sure we leverage what we have. When I say we leverage what we have, we have a technology with massive MIMO that can give a very equivalent spectral efficiency, capacity, and coverage as 5G does today. Let anybody give us a different opinion with facts and figures that that is not true. So we have the capability to leverage between massive MIMO, between SDN, NFV, and the control and use of plane separation. And indeed, one of the unique capabilities of a new radio is the coexistence of 4G and 5G devices simultaneously on the same carrier. So that means I can have a band 40, which is our biggest spectrum, the BWA spectrum, and I can have LTE and NR on the same line. Now, if you look at it, I just want to also add Wired connectivity and fiber is an extremely important criteria for successful 5G and related IoT and the related uh, industry segments of India. 5G spectrum for India. Again, I know I'm running out of time, but let me tell you, the key in spectrum allocations in India is to have the larger the bandwidth. When you think about a GSM had 200 kilobits, UMTS had 5 megahertz, LTE had 20 megahertz, and anything 100 megahertz and higher should be the norm of 5G. Whether we do 3.5G as 3.5G as a great ecosystem, and in my note I have suggested, in India, and I'm not here just as a telecom operator, I'm here to do what is right for the nation. And I think we have a policy framework, we have a government, we have a team, and we have a set of people in this nation who believes what's right for the country. And when you think about it, 3.3 to 4.2 gigahertz is what I'm recommending in the 3.5 gig ecosystem. In the 5G standardization status, the most important thing is the 5G commercial readiness is expected in early 2020. And we just need to be, as in India, we don't need to be laggards. We need to be creating IPR. And we need to be ahead of the game in the standardization body so that when 5G standards come up, we are not chasing those standards, trying to retrofit India's needs after the standards have been delivered. We need to be ahead of the game so that we can drive some of those IPRs and drive some of those standards and be a leader in that game. So accelerating 5G plus IoT in enabling us to creating the grid ecosystem and if you look at, I think we need to continue to do the make in India, specifically for 5G and devices, and we need to be extremely involved in the standardization process. But I also think in creating the India Stack 3.0 that I mentioned towards the grid ecosystem is the most important component for us for today, tomorrow, and day after. And the reason that will allow us to create India's own digital giants of intelligence. And I think that is a must have for us to be a leader because we are indeed a nation in transition to be creators so that we are taking a leadership in next generation, everything connected global ecosystem. And I look forward to working with each one of you as India becomes an inclusive and secure digital India, not just for India, but that new India to lead the world. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much for having me.